Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to the Tech Ranch Radio Show. My name is Marv Dorner, filling in for Marlo Anderson, joined as always by Mr. Jim Walsh. Hello. You're always here, man. Oh, you know, I try you to be. live here? Or... Well, you know, it's my it's my gig. <laughs> it's your gig. <laughs> you know, it's why just I get the big bucks. Keeping, keeping track I say of big the building. Bucks? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, you right. know, you use that in your next negotiation. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Another beautiful weekend. We finally yes. had, had a day where the wind wasn't blowing 7,000 miles an hour. Yeah, and it cooled down. I mean, Friday, we were all mm. kind of holding our breath. But then over the weekend, it was pretty pretty yeah. good. We had buggies and blues over the yep. weekend. Got a little bit of rain. Yeah. Uh, we're supposed to get thunder showers tonight and tomorrow, which is good. We'll take it. Yes. We'll take it. Absolutely. Any, any moisture at this point is, is a good yeah. thing. Um, something not so good that happened over the weekend. I saw you were you were messing around on the computer over there, and I saw Adam West. Yeah, Adam Batman, West passed uh, away. Passed away, and uh, was he eighty six? Eighty eight, I believe. Yeah, I was guessing, but yeah. Um, you know, I was just thinking about it when I saw the photos, and and uh, uh, you know, the, the thing that popped in my head is that that guy or that show, you know, back in the in the fifties and sixties. It was definitely kind of a leading edge uh, technology when you're you're thinking about it because he had all these gadgets on his right. belt. Uh, he had the the car, which was still a, a technological marvel. I think people yeah. still look at that thing. But you know the bike and the, uh, the, the helicopter bike, right? and bat the chopper. He had everything. Bat boat. There was a bat boat. Yeah, and and the the thing was always had the new yeah. gizmo and something attached to it, which you know some of that's probably been copied to some level. And, well, and on DVD, over. yeah, on DVD, and I, I imagine you could probably get it through any of the usual channels. Uh, there's a DVD of the Batman movie they made, the one that he was in, right, in the '60s. And if you get the one with all the uh, special bonus features on it, there is a, a little mini documentary about the history of the Batmobile from the guy who designed it and built it. Oh, really? Yes. Well, it's that's got a lot be of fun. Neat. Yeah. And of course, the Batmobile was in town here a couple of months ago. I, I know, and I missed it, but I, I did hear that it was the the actual Batmobile was yes. was rolling around, and yeah. would have been fun to see. Did, and we have a local go... guy, Johnny Green, who was mm-hmm. in the show. He was he said he was one of the henchmen to the Joker in one of the episodes. Yeah, I went and saw him at a. I think he played at a, a local bar or something. Yeah, about Johnny four Green or five and his ago. Green Men. Yep, and that was and they he still has the green hair. Oh yeah, so go figure. <laughs> go with with works, I guess. So sad day for for Mr. West, yeah. also the mayor of Quahog. If you're yeah. a Family Guy uh, fan, West. <laughs> a little bit softer now. One of, one of, yeah, he's a little softer. One of my favorite shows, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's it sad. But he had a good life. Yes, I did all right for for 88 years old. And yeah, that's kind of what my dad says whenever we talk about somebody who's really old. Oh, my dad is 92 now. Uh, oh. Yeah, and okay. he says if somebody really old like that passes away, he says try not to feel bad for him. If they had a good long life, mm-hmm. they had everything really that uh, you could ask for. Well, I think that guy did too. You know, Adam yeah. West, he 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 had it made very early on, and and uh, just lived on Batman. Also, how bad go, can it be? You're Batman for most of your life. Go to YouTube and enter Adam West commercials. Look at some of the old commercials he did <laughs> for products like Nestle's Quick and Sugar Frosted Flakes. They're hilarious. You know, talk about a guy that's perfect for for selling things to kids of that era. Yeah, uh, you couldn't ask for a, a better fit. I mean, that that guy was uh, was Batman, and a lot and of the interest was... in technological stuff that we talk about on the show mm-hmm. started with shows like Batman and sure. the the cool toys. You know, the line it's uh, not the movie he was in, but one of the other Batman movies. There was a line: "Where does he get those wonderful toys?" And for a lot of us, that was the beginning mm-hmm. of our love affair with technology. Yeah, that and like the Bond series or that, you know, the I Spy stuff and, yeah. and all that cool stuff. So, you know, speaking of kind of spy gadget type things, uh, you know, Ma- Apple had their WWD, WWDC. That's easy for me to say. Sounds like they had an oil change. Week. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> they, they they had their worldwide developer conference last week. Right. Um, and we can we can talk about all the stuff they announced and all the big big things that showed up but the, it's probably the last event they're going to have at the old campus and i don't know how familiar you are with the new spaceship campus that no. is uh, is almost ready to open in cupertino but that's quite the quite the place it's supposed now, to be why do the they wor- call it the spaceship campus have you seen it no <laughs> it's this giant uh it's a mile all the way around yeah. if you walk it it's a circle and it's glass 
pretty much from Whoa. base to the top. And if you look at it from the side, it looks like a giant spaceship. If you look from it, uh, go check out the the drone videos on YouTube. like a Starfleet Academy kind yeah. of thing. When when you're up in the air and you look down on it, you see this giant round building that's all glass, and it's just an amazing. Mm amazing place and uh you know i was just kind of looking at some of the stats a little bit ago the land itself that it's built on 160 million dollars the building is going to probably come in around five billion dollars with a b with a b so when that's done um that's crazy but you know that number is only two percent of the cash reserves that apple has in its bank (laughs) five billion is only two percent. They have two hundred and fifteen billion dollars. Okay, that are just laying around in big stacks of money. I'm guessing, mm. and in one of the rooms. <laughs> but that is amazing that one company can have that much money, and our that government is, is broke, right? Yeah, that is mucho dinero. Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of iPhones, and uh, but they're going to run the whole thing off recycled water. They're going. They planted seven thousand trees on the campus, which is one hundred and fifty two yeah. acres. Um. Like I said, it's a mile to walk all the way around it. They have a 100,000-square-foot exercise facility. Mm -hmm. They have a 300,000-square-foot research facility. This thing is just crazy. It sounds kind of like what Epcot was supposed to be. Remember the original concept that Disney had with Epcot was it was Mm -hmm. supposed to be a, a real futuristic city where people would live and work on technology. Well, and that's just it. they got 12,000 employees that are going to be occupying this place right they don't really have offices i'm sure uh tim cook and a couple of the the big wigs have their own little off- office but one of the things i read a few weeks ago is there is not a corner office because there are no corners right the entire building is round so there's not this fancy big corner office which i'd be willing to bet tim probably has a pretty fancy office well it's like somewhere. the the old uh the old wives' tale about the round table was they wanted to be treated as equals. Mm-hmm. Ergo, they had a round table, so nobody had to worry about being the farthest from the king or yes. whatever. There was no pecking order. You're not sitting at the head of the table yeah. because there isn't a head. But yeah, twelve thousand employees. They got eighteen foot tables that you just carry your laptop and you set it down. Sure, quite the place. My kind of so, gig. And and I think the auditorium which is where they'll obviously have the future uh, WWCV events right. and other um, events that they'll have at Apple. 1,000-person sta- uh, auditorium that people can sit in. Uh, it sounds like quite the place to go visit and go see. I think they are going to have a, a visitor center. Yeah. And I'd be willing to bet they're going to be selling things <laughs> like oh, Apple um, needs the money. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm guessing every Apple fan on earth that's going to make Make it a part of their uh, yeah, their travels to the ad area. It'll be sort of like a mecca for a Absolutely. lot of people. Absolutely, it'll be a big place for people to go. So, yeah. they, they you know they had a lot of announcements, but and it was really well organized. They announced some new uh, iOS is coming out for the uh, iPhones. They announced some new stuff for Mac. Um, you know, it was it was it was a good event. It was really well organized and really well run, but it didn't have that real big punch. You no? know, didn't have it. Didn't have Steve Jobs up there. Oh well, <laughs> which Steve was that would have been life. that would have been kind of crazy. Well, Steve himself was bigger than life. Yes, it was. So we'll talk about a few other things coming up on the Tech Ranch twelve seventy. Right now eighty three. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk twelve seventy. Follow the Guru of Geek at Facebook.com backslash the Tech Ranch or Twitter at Guru of Geek or the Tech Ranch.com. Here again is your Guru of Geek, Marlo Marv Anderson. Dorner. No, sorry. <laughs> we got to work on that one. Marlo, Marv, you know, it kind of blends together. Yeah. So it's it's okay. Welcome back to the Tech Ranch. My name again is Marv Dorner, co piloted by Jim Walsh, as always. Yes. Um, got kind of a cool topic up next. I'm um, going to be, we are joined, not going to be joined, we we have him on the phone, so joined by Dennis Lindahl, he's the coordinator of the Tioga Drone Camp for Kids. Welcome, Dennis. Hey, good morning, guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. So so tell us, I, you know, I've personally never flown a drone, not even one of the little toy ones, I've, I've not. I've, I've driven the little, uh, you know, kind of remote control cars that are 
have a drone camera on them and that sort of thing. But tell us your background and what led to create the drone camp. So my company, Dakota Public Relations, we were early adopters of the drone technology like five years ago. And so my partner, um, uh, Bob Lindy, who is an Emmy award-winning videographer, was telling me that, you know, hey, you really wanted to get a drone. This would be a big thing. And so we got into a partnership together. We purchased our first drone, like I said, about five years ago and, you know, used it a lot, did some commercials for, you know, Target Logistics, which is the temporary workforce housing company out here, did commercials, did, used it a lot. And then, you know, of course, technology advances. And so mm-hmm. we opted to go with some better uh, equipment. And so we had this drone sitting around and, you know, with not a lot to do with it because it was older technology. And so I went to my client, my other client, which is Tioga, the city of Tioga. And I said, hey, I said, we've got this drone. Let's teach kids how to fly it. And it's it's been amazing and unbelievable to watch how many people have jumped on board with what I thought was a crazy idea. Well, they learn quick. I mean, those kids are, they've been playing video games and and using mobile devices their whole life, and and to put a drone remote control in their hand probably wasn't a big stretch for some of them. No, and when you add the VR technology, you know, they put these headsets on, and I mean, it is just like they are in the cockpit. And so uh, Enel Green Energy North America, which is the uh, builders and uh, maintenance people for the uh, the Lindahl Wind Farms, it's north of Tioga, sure. they uh, came on board, they flew people, they flew people out, they did demonstrations, they used drones to inspect the wind turbine. And so the number of companies that have come on board with us, uh, you know, to reach out to these kids and inspire these kids is just, it's unbelievable, and it's inspiring to see that, you know, something that we thought was a crazy idea is just taken off. We had um, 76 kids in the first drone camp, and we're... Uh, happen at this year it's 80 so we'll see wow um, so tell us a little bit about more about what they're expected to learn or what they can expect when they uh, attend the drone camp so professor john bridewell from und he comes out and he delivers uh, a, a considerable amount of the curriculum but what we cover is uh you know even though kids don't have drones it's important for us to get them to understand the basics which is aerodynamics and the principles of flight. So that's the first thing that we cover. So we cover a couple hours of that about, you know, you know, airfoil surfaces and, you know, pitch yawn. You know, we cover all of that in the first part of the camp. And then we talk about the safety of it and the privacy issues, you know, not flying, you know, sure. you know, into your neighbor's windows and, you know, things like that. Privacy and safety. And uh, the safety aspects of it are, you know, these propellers are moving at high speed. These drones can move at high speed. You have to have, you know, eye safety, eye health, and protection. And, um, you know, you can cut a finger off with these things. And so we talked to them about that. And then the fu- and finally, um, the United States Air Force came out last year and talked to them about vocational opportunities, as did Enel Green Energy. They talk about vocational opportunities. And this year we, we have a uh, – oh, pardon me, the uh, North Dakota Department of Commerce – um, came out and just talked to them about vocational opportunities. And that's what gets, that's really what gets kids excited is when they think right. that, hey, here's something fun that I can do, but I can devote my time to learning this really, really well. And I could have a job when I get out of this. And then, of course, the aspect of having the university, Devil's Lake region is coming out this year to deliver some curriculum. And, you know, we take these kids and want to inspire them and send them on. You know, we don't want to just keep them here forever. We want to send them on to higher education, post-secondary education. If they can, if they can learn about it and and uh, and become a uh, certified drone pilot in the future, that's what it's really all about: is getting these kids jobs and diversifying diversifying our economy. Is there any any thought or any plans to kind of offer a, a you know a next level drone camp once you get this thing established for a year or two? And yeah, and- so Skyscopes. Skyscopes this year is going to offer an introductory class, introductory course to the uh, 107. Um, that's the certification for adults where they can fly drones commercially. So we're going to do that this year. That's a, an aspect of the drone camp that's been added. And then another aspect of the drone camp that's added is this year we're adding 3D printing. So we're going to do a 3D printing uh, demonstration for the kids so that they can see 
how to make their own parts and see that it can be done. And then that 3D printer is going to be donated to the Tioga Public Schools, oh, just wow. like we donated a uh, DJI Phantom 3 to the Tioga Public Schools last year. So what kind of drones are these kids kind of piloting around? Do they have that, that full-sized um, you know, drone that you've been using or were using to begin with at, at the PR fun- function? Or That's a great question because um, Minot uh, Hobby Shop, Minot Airport Hobby Shop, they uh, selected the drones for us. They helped us. They advised us on what kind of drones. They advised us on the professional drones, the platforms. Uh, that we can use for the camera. So we had those drones donated to the school. But then we also gave away a sport drone, which is a Aton Plus, and that's the racing drone. And so we gave away one of those at a drawing, but the kids, they all get, every one of the kids, thanks to NL, will get their own practice drone. And that's the same kind of drone that you would fly, you know, in the house. Right. However, they do have HD cameras on them, and so they get the full effect. Um <laughs> You know, and that's something that they can practice with, and they get to take those home. Lots of practice videos of uh, chasing the dogs and cats, probably <laughs> would be my guess. Yeah, <laughs> you know, last year I think we I think we do hold the record in North Dakota of the most drones flown at once. Yes, last year we had uh, seventy eight drones flying at the same time simultaneously, and so you know, someone says that we should get that on YouTube or get you know absolutely get us out or something. But yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun. The kids have a lot of fun, and you know. We're, put, we're putting Tioga on the map. That's the point. Yeah. Is, is there a, an age range that's most common to come to the camp, or is there yeah, pretty much you know, wide the, open? Yeah, you know, the, 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 the seventh graders, the, they seem, the seventh graders, they seem to really take to it. You know, sometimes the older kids, 11th and 12th grade, you know, they're the ones that, you know, they, they can sometimes be too cool for school. Um, uh, and right. so the, the older ones, they probably already have some experience with it. But, yeah, it's generally the younger ones. And do most most of these kids show up with, I mean, almost absolutely no drone experience? Are these kids just brand yeah, new? Yeah, so the younger ones, the younger ones, obviously, they don't have as much experience. The older ones, I mean, we had folks, we had folks at the last drone camp that actually brought their own drones. We had kids that brought their drones. We had kids from five states that attended oh, wow. our camp last year, and so we're hoping for the same thing. But these kids. I mean, some of them bring their own kits, drones that they had built themselves. I mean, it, it, it's just a spectrum. It's amazing what these kids are capable of uh, with, with all the online resources and, uh, you know, r- everything just right at their fingertips. They can, they can really do some cool stuff when you turn them loose. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, you know, we just want to focus that energy and get them into a career, something that, you know, we hear a lot of talk about millennials, and millennials, you know, not having jobs or, you know, the largest generation that, you know, they really don't have a lot of that, uh, activity in the economy. This is, a, this is an aspect that's been missing. If we could teach these kids how to get involved with technology and get involved with jobs, and you're not talking about huge amounts of, of education. I mean, you're just talking about some of these people that are doing it right now are, are just self-learners. Yeah, and I think you touched on, you know, the, the job opportunities a little bit. And, but, you know, it's kind of surprising, I think, for a lot of people to know uh, the, the maintenance uh, aspect of what's coming on. You know, I've heard of, of obviously, the, the wind farm people using it. But, you know, people to get up on top of a, a fairly large building to look at HVAC stuff to, um, you know, just all these little weird ways that they're using the technology or farmers are using it to inspect large scopes of their crop to see if there's any damage. I mean, have you heard of any other odd uh, emerging technology or emerging opportunities out there? Absolutely. So we're working with a company right now called Aerodrone. They have fixed wing drones and they're using that for precision agriculture where they can, they can identify problem spots in, in crops and they can apply pesticides. They can apply herbicides mm-hmm. very specifically, uh, and so that's that's a that's a emerging technology. The other one that I'm hearing a lot about is the inspection of cell phone towers. Now oh, you, guys, yeah. you guys get up on cell phone towers. You know they got a strap on. They, they you know they got to they got to have their you know OSHA compliance. It's very dangerous to climb on these cell phone towers. And I'm hearing of uh, specialized programs, post secondary education, university programs, where they're actually teaching students how to inspect cell phone towers with drones. Now, imagine you and I, I'm talking on a cell phone to you right now. 
imagine all the cell phone towers in the United States of America that need inspection and all of the potential business there for inspecting those towers with the use of, you know, unmanned aerial systems. Yeah, I mean, the potential is unbelievable. Right. Well, lots of lots of great opportunities. Dennis, I want to thank you for uh, for coming on. you want to give the website real quick? So you can check it out at eventbrite.com. Just type in Tioga. And, uh, you know, it's August 5th and August 6th, and we look forward to having everybody come out. Thank you, Marlo and Jim, for letting us come on and talk about it. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with more of the Tech Ranch. Right now, 83. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to the Tech Ranch. My name is Marv Dorner, filling in for Marlo with Jim Walsh, as always. Hey. And we got kind of a cool product to talk about next. Uh, it's one of those things that everybody uses, just about every, well, most of, <laughs> most people use just about every, I probably don't use it as much as I probably should, but. Mouthwash? Mirrors. Oh, oh. You know, I, I try not to look in the mirror too often. It gets yeah. a little little, little crazy. But joined with today by Vocek Kaziski. He's the CEO of Miracool. And I probably just butchered your name, didn't I? Yeah. Hello, it's Vocek. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to be here with you. Nice Thank to you. meet you. You know, it, we were just commenting on, on, on mirrors, and, and everybody uses them. So any, any sort of movement forward, any sort of jump forward into uh, – Making this a little more technological and uh, more fun to use is a is a big jump. So tell us about the Miracle uh, product. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, <clears throat> mirror is something that everybody has at his home. Yes, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, we wanted to uh, let's say do something that will help you in uh, each day activity. So I asked myself, why should I uh, invent another uh, dust rubber like uh, people are using? I mean, everybody has a lot of uh, have a lot of things now around. So we thought maybe let's use a mirror and let's put into the mirror the intelligence that will allow you to do things better. And that's why uh, that's how I mean, we invented Miracle. So this is the mirror. It's a cool mirror, and this uh, does miracles. That's why it's miracles. Yeah, and it it is spelled M I R R O. No L, and then cool, C O O L. So yes. that was one thing exactly. we wanted to emphasize and make I mean, sure that people, if they're looking it up. We wanted to do a trick. We wanted to do a trick with the name. Yes. So it's a mirror. It's cool, and it's miracle. So it's three in one. So, so the way this works is that it does communicate with your with your smartphone, right? And then it'll show you upcoming yeah. events and and some of the other things. What are some of the other uh, What are some of the other features of the the product? Yes, exactly. So. Um, it's a mirror that is equipped uh, with uh, electronics behind and with a camera. Uh, the camera uh, monitors in real time uh, and checks for the face. If it finds a face, it recognizes the face, creates a face screen, and checks in the mirror cloud. So the cloud that we use for our Miracle product, whether such face is somehow connected to any of the profiles. And you, as the owner of the Miracle, can set up in your profile that you want to connect this Miracle to different services you use every day. Like, for example, calendar. You can uh, select to see on your mirror your to-dos for the day, for example. Yes, you can check also, for example, the weather. Yes, because if you you wake up in the morning, you go out of your uh, house, I mean, you want to know how to wear up. Yes, I mean, what is the weather, for example. If you have a meeting that starts early morning, you want to know what is the traffic. Uh, if you, for example, have some older person in your family, you want to be sure that she's reminded about some pills that she, she uh, should take uh, every day or every week and so on. Yes. So uh, let's say uh, to do a helicopter overview of the functionality, what we invented is a device that uh, has a kind of storage, a cloud, that you, as the owner of the device, you can set up what the mirror should uh, show you in which time frame. Because, for example, you may choose a different thing to be shown to you in the morning while you wake up, and different if the evening, for example, when you have some anniversaries with your girlfriend or, uh, for example, some meeting with your friends. Yes, so sure. you are free to decide what you want to show to which user at what time frame. So this is all controlled with a uh, kind of a smartphone app. Then you can you can log into that and say, "Show me the weather, show me my no- my meeting notifications." Um, yes, exactly. That sort of thing. So you can you can handle it from there. Yeah. 
Is there a... and and uh, you have you can have more than one mirror, and with your mobile app you can control on which de- device you want these uh, reminders or your to dos or whatever else to be shown. For example, you may have one in your uh, house, and you might ha- you may have one in a different place you stay as well. For example, your office. And if you know that for a while you will be no, using no office, I mean you just switch it off by your, using your app, yes? And immediately the mirror works still as a mirror, but you are sure that it will not show your, let's say, uh, reminders or whatsoever. Simply for a time being you switch it off, it will not work as a mirror full. It will be just a mirror, yes? And you can imagine how many houses there is in the world, yes? Everybody has mirror, yes? So yep. it is a regular mirror, but intelligent one. So it's not obvious at all to to anybody who's. I mean, if I were to walk into somebody's home and they had one, and I used the mirror, it wouldn't uh, automatically say something. Or would you like to download? Or I mean, nothing appears on the on the mirror if I don't have the no. app installed. No, no. I mean, this is a regular mirror. So when you buy it, you switch it on for the first time. You have to set it up. Yes, but then when it sets sure. it up, I mean, it doesn't show anything. It's not like this that someone. Uh, let's say, uh, else will come and you'll see and the mirror will say, hello, I don't know you, yes? The mirror will say nothing. I mean, it behaves as a regular mirror. It starts to behave as a mirror pool when you when the person who is recognized stands in front of. Okay. The, you know, the, the facial recognition is kind of fascinating to me. Um, it, does, does it recognize when people ha- change hairstyles or you know, difference in facial hair? I mean, what? where's the threshold as far as being able to to uh, determine okay. who's who's using so let it? Me, let me explain that. In uh, I mean, I don't want to bother you with all those, yeah. you know... Uh, yeah, we don't need to get real deep. But... And so on, yes? <laughs> simply saying they are, there are simply two ways of recognizing devices, yes? The first, way, the first way is to train a kind of algorithm, yes? And the second way, which we use, is to use the uh, face point. I mean, on every face, on each face, you can uh, find uh, sure. 70 different points that are common for all of the people. For example, the position of your nose, the position of your eyes, and so on, yes? And mm-hmm. we use the, uh, that technique, yes? So simply saying uh, our methodology for recognizing the, fi- the face is to, uh, let's say, collect those uh, face features, we call those points face features, and calculate the distances between them, and of course some other, some other also behaviors of those face features. Yes. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a different hairstyle. It doesn't matter if you went for a vacation for two weeks and you came with a different color of your skin. Yes. It doesn't matter if you stand in front of the mirror or if your face it's a little bit uh, directed on left on the right, because uh, the percentages between the face point, those face features will stay the same. Right. That's why it's a very good uh, face recognition system. Okay. Well, that 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 was probably my main really question was was could you could it, you know would it make you made when you made minor changes were you able to still use the device without having to reset it up? And it sounds like you've uh, you've thought of that, and there's definitely a way to do that without having all kinds of problems. Um, one of I the, will tell you even more. I yeah, will sure. tell you even more if I may, because. Uh, as you know, we use those face features. So having in mind that we use face features like the nose, like the face, and so on, we went a step forward because we do not just recognize the face. Yes? I mean, we recognize mm-hmm. face gestures. We know when you smile. We know when you blink your left eye. And we know when you position your face from in front of the mirror to the left or to the right side. Yes, We can check that. And we can program those face gestures as well. So, for example, let's imagine the situation you decided that you want in the morning to have an invitation from your agenda to appear on your mirror. And let's imagine that you want to use a blinking of right eye to confirm that you want to participate on the meeting or the left eye that you don't want. Yes, you are able to program that on our device. That's the beauty of the thing of those face features. Oh, that's that's creepy, but it's it's really cool. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's crazy how, how how deep you can go and and what you can learn. I mean, that's that's amazing how you can store that and and control uh, everything from just so facial tics. When you will find people dancing in front of the mirror 
probably those are the people using our miracle device. Oh man, that's crazy! So, have you ever, you know, one of the things that popped in my head while you were talking about this, have you ever tried it on identical twins? Uh, nope. But this is a good idea. I will note that. I yeah. Will note that. I, I, you know, it just popped into my head that that might be kind of a weird uh, test to see if it it does. You know, because you do you you talked about just that minor detail of the eyes just being you know partially apart, but um, you know, it'd be kind of fun to to see if it works. Um, I understand this is you're running a Kickstarter right now. How does everybody find you there, and how can they contribute and, and get involved? Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, we decided uh, to go uh, with a Kickstarter just uh, for a common understanding. Uh, if we will, uh, I mean, doesn't matter what will happen with the Kickstarter. It's uh, quite good and goes into the right direction, sure. but uh, it's not a way for us uh, to uh, let's say produce the device because uh, we go into this direction anyway, we believe in that, and so on, yes? But we decided, I decided to go with the Kickstarter because I believe in something that they call social wisdom, yes? Mm -hmm. I want people to say it's fun, it's sexy, we want to use it, we want to have it in our houses, yes? Because that will confirm to myself that it's not only me who is a fan of this technology and who wants to use that piece uh, of the device in our house. But I want people to confirm, yes, that this is something that they really like and they will share, they will love it, they will like it and share with their friends, yes? So this is the important thing, yes? Now, we have a website, which is uh, mirofool.com. And if you will go to this website, you will find the Kickstarter on the main screen and you can uh, set up to the newsletter. You can leave your first name, last name and uh, email address. And for sure, we will come back to you when uh, our uh, campaign will run. It's scheduled uh, till, at the end of the June, beginning of the July. We are uh, discussing with our advisors uh, which date will be better. And we will decide uh, based on uh, their advice as well. All right, perfect. Well, thanks for joining the Tech Ranch. We'll be back with a little more in just a second. Right now, 83. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. Welcome back to the Tech Ranch. My name is Marv Dorner, filling in for Marlo Anderson today. And I thought we'd wrap up the show today talking about this this fancy little machine I got on the desk here, Jim. Uh, it looks like a laptop, but it's, well, it, it looks like a laptop. It, it does look like a laptop, and it is kind of a, a very laptop. light laptop. Yes, uh, you could almost throw it. It weighs about two and a half pounds. Yeah. So it weighs nothing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Um, it's called a Chromebook. And I've been waiting for this thing for months to to show up and to be available. And it finally came last week. I got to play with it. So it's very thin. I mean, you could you could slide that in with your papers. In yeah. A, in a, you could put that in an attaché case. You and could it would fit right in. No yep. Problem. Like a pad folio type thing. Just yeah. slide it in there and off you go. It's only got a 12 inch screen. Um, and this is the Samsung Chromebook Pro. Uh, there is a Samsung P- Chromebook Plus. And for those of you who are not familiar with Chromebooks, uh, it's primarily a browser machine. You can you can jump onto to Chrome and uh, Google Chrome and and uh, do all the things you can do online: Facebook and email and Twitter and browse the web and shop and play games and waste time and <laughs> do all the things you could normally do online. And that's primarily its purpose. It's really designed to be run online. It does not have a huge hard drive in it, which is one of the reasons why it's a little bit cheaper and lighter and thinner. Uh, It does not have a lot of memory, so a lot of RAM because of the same reason. This thing does allow you to put additional uh, storage in it. So I have a 128 gig little mini SD card that I slip in, and it's got a ton of music on it. And... uh, you know, I can store store files and do all the things I want to do there, but it doesn't add that half a pound with a hard drive, and it doesn't add uh, you know another half an inch thicker because of the hard drive. So, uh, schools were primarily the target for many many years for Google and Chromebook. So, you didn't see a lot of these out in the wild. You didn't see a lot of people carrying the Chromebook, and this is sort of the first big push by a company like Samsung or, or Acer or Asus, who are primarily the sellers of this thing, um, to get it in the hands of consumers by making it a little more attractive. And, right. and uh, you know, this the Chromebook's been around since 2011, so this isn't new. This isn't a brand-new emerging technology like that the mirror we were just talking about, Miracool. 
Uh, this is something that's been around for a little bit, and it's last year. This is a weird fact. We talked about Apple earlier, right. but last year was the first year that Chromebook outsold uh, Apple, only for one quarter. But for one quarter, they outpaced <laughs> Apple's sales um, on the MacBooks and and uh, you know the Mac computers. So that was really a, a big threshold for them to pass, and they're making headway in an area that was primarily owned by Apple for many, many years, and that's the schools. And you're starting now to see it go into businesses. You're starting to see it get into the consumers. And, you know, there's a lot of people that recommend uh, Chromebooks to people that all they do is things online. So if, if you're one of those people that you just do Facebook and you just manage your photos online and you just shop and browse the web and do all that stuff, get your email from Hotmail or Gmail or whoever you're getting right. it from, and you don't need uh, all this other stuff that's running on the background in a Windows laptop. You know, you have just that huge Windows background backbone to run on. You have all those extra applications that are running that are supposedly there to keep you safe or, or keep you productive. And all you need is just email and Facebook and a couple of uh, ways to read and maybe create a Word doc. These devices are it. The Chromebook will do exactly that, and they'll do it way better and way faster than a Windows computer because you don't have that, just that all that stuff running in the background. So you're starting to see more and more manufacturers get into the game. Uh, Acer and Samsung were kind of the beginning and still are probably the leaders. Uh, you're starting to see... Chromebooks dip into that $120, $140 price point, which is amazing when you think of the technology that's here and the attractiveness for somebody that just wants a way to get online. And you're starting to see things like this where it's really, really thin, really, really light. Uh, you know, if somebody just wants to carry this thing around and not carry that six pound behemoth that they've had for five years yeah. sitting on their desktop that's a big 17 inch screen the old workhorse yeah uh, you know you boat anchor right. <laughs> whatever you want to call it doorstop um you know i got a couple of computers like that and i never carried that you know when i went to meet with with a client or got out of the office i would take a tablet i used yeah. to take my android tablet with and and take my notes and do all that stuff there this is exactly the same thing and Check this out, Jim. I can flip this thing around. Now it's a tablet. Excellent. Uh, 360 degrees. It just flips all over. Yeah. And just like that, I'm running a tablet. And this is the big one for Samsung. They just launched this, and this is the reason why it delayed. And I've been just fawning over this thing forever, waiting for it to show up. It took them a while to get the bugs out? Is that well, the this is the first one running on an Intel processor. Oh, okay. Primarily in the past... The uh, the Chromebooks were even running on ARM pro processors, which is the mobile processor. Right. It's what you got in your phones. Uh, it's what you have in very mobile computers. So they're they're. This is the first one to run on Intel. It's a prototype. It's well, it's a prototype, and it broke it for Ooh, a couple of months, where okay. they just could not get the Android apps, which is yeah. also brand new. Right. So now you can run Android ra apps on here. They didn't like to play nice together, and it mm. was just killing the machine. So That happens. This is probably the reason I was uh, waiting for this one to show up was that extra power, but the ability to run Android apps. So now it is more like a laptop. You were closer at the beginning of the conversation than, <laughs> than we were in the middle because I can run apps spe you know, specifically for Facebook, specifically for OneNote, which is where I have all of my notes yeah. here that I'm reading, you know, going from. Uh, email, anything you want to do that you can normally do on an Android phone or tablet can now be done on the... Anytime something new like this comes out, it's like Christmas Eve for a lot of us. You know, this is the first device that I've really been excited for for a long time. And my sure. wife was, was just f funny because she's like, just go buy the, the other one, the cheaper one. It <laughs> was 100 bucks one, cheaper. Yeah. And I'm like, no, this, this is different. This is a right. step forward. This is uh, going to be big for me because I can take this little tiny device with me, 12-inch screen. I got three meetings today off, off site where I have to go to somebody's office. And uh, to be able to go in there with this little device, handwrite little notes with the stylus that comes with, which is also unique to the Samsung, 
um, take handwritten notes. I can type them if, if I want. I can read anything that I have. I can access the web. I have access to everything I need to make that meeting just a success yeah. and make it more as productive as possible. So this device is is crazy. Um, battery life, unbelievable. They they advertise it as ten hours. I have not seen ten hours, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours means they turned it on and they set it off on the desk on the lowest possible screen setting yeah. and just let it go until it died. Approximately Completely. 10. I've gotten close to 8, though. Yeah. And I ride this thing pretty hard. I usually have a podcast going. or Yeah, I mean, the question is realistically, yeah. using it the way you would actually use yeah. it, how, how long is it working for? Yeah, I probably get close to 8, and That's I ride bad. this thing really hard. It's not bad at all. So I think general I get use. get you cross-country on an airplane. Yeah, yeah. You know, most people in general use, you're probably looking at something, they're probably going to yeah. get that 8-ish. You know. And if you're really, really riding it hard, playing a lot of video and using that screen, yeah, 6 probably is realistic. Well, realistically, if you're traveling, if you're flying from here to, say, San Francisco, mm-hmm. it would get you there and uh, uh, it would keep you going uh, with plenty of time to get there. Absolutely. And and, and, and with all the restrictions coming on on uh, the th- devices you can take and weight and everything else, yeah. this is probably a direction you want to go. I would encourage everybody to go up to the website to bebusy.com and check out. There's a blog post up there and even a podcast. If you want to listen to me talk more, which is entirely possible. I, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. And if you, you, you have other suggestions or whatever on the Chromebook Pros, I'd like to hear it. Send it to me at B-E-B-I-Z-Z-Y on Twitter. Jim, it's been real fun again. Likewise, it's nice always, for us sir. to get together. And uh, Marlo, thanks for inviting me to guest host on the Tech Ranch. We'll talk to you guys next time.